Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at modeling some realistic looking cords or ropes or cables using box twisting, which is part of Fredo's Fredo scale. <laughs> So if you're looking to make something like a, you know, like a smooth cord or cable or something like that, uh, we've done videos on that before, just doing a circle and follow a path, that sort of thing. But I'm going to do like a, like a high tension, like braided rope that kind of swirls, swirls around, you know, like, you know, that. Uh, we're going to take a look at making something like that right now. Okay, so I have here the start. This is just the beginning of a, a model. Uh, that I'm working on. There we go. Uh, and it's going to be like a, a tent kind of shape. So I got these, the basic geometry in here, and these are going to be uh, where I want my, my cables to be. So like looking, you know, tense braided materials that are going to go up here. Um, so I want to see how to do that. So let's, let's look at a couple of options. So I do have, uh, these are components, so I only have to do one. So if I model one of these, it's going to show up on all of them. So if I double click in here, uh, you can see everything else grays out. But uh, let's let's clean up the view a little bit. Let's go to Component Edit, and turn Hide Rest of Model. The rest of that goes away, but all of my chords stay. That's going to work. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to work in the plane of this edge a lot. So to make things simple on myself or easier on myself, I'm going to go to Tools, click on Axes. Click on the end of this edge, then drag up and click again on this edge twice. And there we go. See how my axis aligns. So the red axis is going right up here. That's just going to make it easier. I don't, it's not a requirement, but something I just, you know, could do. So let's look at some options here. What could we do? We could come in here uh, with something like a polygon, maybe a six sided polygon, and then, you know, draw that out. Um, an inch. Uh, and then I could pull that up here and see how that gives kind of the faint image, you know, it kind of implies that there's something going on. There's some additional ridges. That's okay. That's, that's all right. If I was looking to really stay low poly, then that might be a great way to get a, a cable in there that looks like something as opposed to just, uh, you know, just an edge. But uh, that's not good enough for me. I want to do more. So I'm going to come in here to this. I'm going to go look at this, uh, my, my hexagon, my six-sided piece I put in there. And I'm going to put some more circles on here. I'm going to put low, quality, low, low poly circles. So I'm going to do like uh, eight-sided circles. I could do higher poly and create more edges. And it wouldn't be a big deal. But having fewer sides is just going to make less geometry in my model for something that is not, you know, it's not the hero. This is going to look cool, but it's not the, the most important part of my model. So I don't need to waste or, or burn a bunch of polygons on that. All right, so I could do something like this and then take that. And if we just take that, I'm just going to chase it right up to the top. Um, you know, that looks pretty good. That looks like, you know, multiple strands in a, a rope or just running up there. Uh, the issue that I have with it, and let's click out here, let's... It's saying, since I modified the axes, it's making sure I, I did want to do that. I do. So that looks good. That looks not bad. So, I mean, this this is a few more polys than the thing we had before, but it does it does sell rope or cord or tension cable, whatever you want to say. Uh, it sells it better than the last one. But I still want that swirly pattern going up. So we're going to come back in here, and uh, I'm going to just... Oh, here, I'll just go select and then no, I'll push pull this back down. I want to lose my, my center line right there. Um, all right, so we're just going to push down like that and then uh, I'll get rid of everything from here on up. So that was okay. That was not bad. That was a, a fun exercise, but I want to twist this as it goes up. Um, so we're going to use an extension called box twisting, it's part of Fredo scale. So if I go to tools, Fredo collection, Fredo scale, uh, it's right here, this box twisting. So what is what I have to do is I have to get a piece of geometry and I can spin that, twist that around its center axis by up to 359 degrees. So I can do almost a full rotation. 
So what I'm going to do is I need some geometry here to twist. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this up partially like, yeah, we'll go like 24, two foot. All right. And then to make this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this one section and then we're just going to copy it on top of each other to make a seamless rope. So I'm going to prep this a little bit by deleting my end face. I could do this after the fact, but uh, it's going to be quicker and easier to just get rid of these two faces now because I don't need them. The other thing that's happening for some reason, uh, I got this one edge that didn't soften with the rest of them. I'm not sure why I must have done something to break that. All right, but there we go. So I'm going to double click to, or triple click to grab that geometry. And I'm going to go up to Tools, Fredo 6 Collection, Fredo Scale, and Box Twisting. Now, when you first do that, it will always give you this box which is aligned to the world axis, the straight up, straight down, left, right. Um, that's fine, but I don't want to twist around that. I want to twist around this. So all I have to do is kind of hover over any geometry that's going in the right direction, click on it, and it spins that box. Now, I just grab a handle that I want to twist. I'm going to grab an end right here. I'm going to click here to start twisting and come around. I want to come around half a twist, 180 degrees, so I can, I can play with this thing, you know, like, a, like I was a beginner user and try to go right to it, or I'm gonna, not a beginner user. So I'm just gonna type 180 and I'm gonna hit enter. So it's, don't get scared. It does look like it's twisting around the middle there, but you see when you type in 180 and hit enter, it's going to, there we go. Nice, look at that. So it's spun around half a turn which gives us this nice looking braid. That's perfect. I'm gonna triple click that geometry. I'm gonna grab it by the end right here. Because we have an even number of segments and we spun it around exactly 180 degrees, I should be able to just take this, pull it straight up. It lines up perfectly. And let's say, okay, do that 10X, enter. Nope, 12X, enter. Okay, 13X. There we go. That gets us to the top and that looks good last thing we need to do of course is get rid of these extra edges not get rid of but hide them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to triple click again and i'm just going to go to soft and smooth and turn it on slide up a little bit. do that right soft and smooth that up till it goes away. Oh, look at that. That looks like a rope. All right, cool. So that was quick. That was easy. And you can see that the biggest thing with this, when you, when you do go to do this, you want to create that braided rope look. Um, you do want to be conscious of how many twists you can get in. So I can't just do a rope this long and just go, okay, spin it around 17 times. Um, I have to figure out how to make small segments copy the segments, connect them together, and there you go. You get a nice braided rope on your tensile tent structure or whatever thing you're going to add those to. So I know a lot of times things like a big piece of rope end up being extra. It's a little more than what you have to do. A lot of times just a single line will represent what that is. But if you are looking to give your model a little bit extra detail, that little, little thing that, that you know, makes it look like it fits in the real world more than an edge. Plus an edge doesn't show up anywhere. If you take this into, you know, virtual reality or I go scale this up in layout or something like that, an edge is always a pixel, you know, very thin, so it might not show up well. So adding some kind of depth or, or, or heft, some volume to chords can make your model look that much better. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them. If you subscribe, most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Have you used Fredo scale? What do you think of box twisting? Do you have a better way to create rope? Let us know down in the comments below. We love making these videos. We like to need more when showing something you want to see. Thank you.